and you've got Instagram. And you can just read the comments as we go. Out loud? Yeah. Oh, my hat. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure if you've got your thumb on the screen, whether that'll affect yeah. anything. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, welcome to Cactus Country. Um, so it's Zara and Bella, right? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So Zara's got Facebook, Bella's got Instagram. So if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments below and they're going to read them out. Um, Zara and Bella are both new to the team. And uh, yeah, it's going to enable us to do some more live tours of the garden. So welcome to Cactus Country. Let's go for a walk. How hot was it again today, girls? Like 35, 36? Yeah, pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Warm day. There's, um, there's actually a few flowers out today, so we're going to go for a walk and see what's flowering today. Um, there's quite a few white flowers out still. There's still a few colourful flowers throughout North America and Mexico as well, so we're going to cover as much as we can. I don't know if they can hear me very well if you're that far away, so you might have to stay close. Can you see the top of that one? You might be able to zoom in and see the top. How's it look? <laughs> and you can zoom back out to keep, keep following on. Someone said you hear you they can hear you. So oh great. Nice. So this part of the garden is one of the first parts of the garden. So when I was a kid, this was the backyard. We had just a quarter acre of cacti. And just keep in mind that when dad arrived here, this was all a peach orchard. So there were no plants here whatsoever. Peach orchard got bulldozed. And back in those days, we didn't have any equipment. So dad would have the truck bring in a load of sand and then he would spread it all by hand. And then he would get rock in and once again, all by hand. And then over the years it grew. So the original collection that went into this part of the garden eventually got split out into areas of origin. So now we're in South America, but back in the 80s and early 90s, this was all of the collection in one tiny little area. So it's hard to imagine what that would have been like, but um, if I get a chance, I'll find some old photos and post them up for you to see what this looked like back in the 80s and 90s. But as you can see here, we've got um, Super Pedro, which is a Trichocereus, and it's still flowering. Um, the flowers this morning were much more open, but the really hot weather today is definitely um, making them close up a little bit now. They're a bit dehydrated. Um, and even in this plant, it's a really old plant now. You'll notice that there's some really old arms as well that because of dehydration and just they're so big now that some of the old arms are getting droopy and falling over as well. So yeah, this is one of the oldest plants that we've got in this section. Oh. Just show them Mario and Pickle following us around. Oh, show them this um, yellow flowering one over here as well. Walk over there and have a look. No comment? Someone said it looks wonderful. Oh, nice. <laughs> Someone said it's beautiful. Nice. Someone says they love cactus country. Oh, that's great. So there are quite a few coloured flowers still out. We'll go into the next sections and see what else is flowering. Some nice red flowers here. I don't know all of the plant names like Dad does, but the ones that I do definitely know the names of, I'll try and identify. Now, these girls stand about here, that should get me in the shot. I'll show you this one. 
So this one is uh, Mama Pasacana. So this is one of the original Pasacana Tusheculae that we had in our collection from when Dad started the gardens. We've collected seed off this now and some of her babies are growing and they're quite large right up the back. So because they're hybrids, um, they've grown quicker than this one ever did. So this one's grown to this height in about 30 years. I'm gonna show you some in a little while that are only about 15 to 20 years old that are as big as this now. Follow me. As we walk through here, you can just scan all this to give people an idea of how big the uh, landscape is. People liking our random tour? People are saying that they're going to come back. Nice. So that's good. <laughs> Great. Have, um, have you all been seeing all the updates to the uh, outdoor dining spaces that we're completing at the moment? Be interested to see what people have seen on socials. We've got a random gum tree growing. How often do you fertilize? Uh, so usually what we'll do to fertilize is put out a slow release fertilizer or chook manure, but we'll only do that before a very big storm. The reason being, if you put it out when it's dry, sometimes the fertilizer can burn holes in the plants. So we'll do that usually once a year, sometimes twice, depending. What's the comment? It's bueno. Bueno? Wayne Limbrick. Oh, Wayne. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Does he know that you're on the camera? He might say, now. Say hi. Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> so this is one of the hybrids. Um, now, this plant here is probably only around 15 years old, but it's the same type as Mama Pasacana. So whether this is a direct or an indirect um, seedling grown from Mama Pasacana. You can see just how big this is in 15 to 20 years in comparison to that one, which albeit a little bit thicker in um, the arm, it's, the growth is just so interesting. So when we grow hybrids and we get genetics into those plants that have quicker growing genetics, it's just really interesting to see how big they can get in such a short period of time. careful this one has a really sharp barb on it um, prickles found that out the hard way he uh, tried to take this one on presumably trying to hunt a rabbit and he came back to us and he had some stuck in his side that he was trying to chew out I had to take him to the vets and they um, put him under for a little while and when he came back they said he had 16 prickles through his mouth so yeah prickles is definitely named correctly. Check out this side of the plant with all of the flowers. So just to give people an idea of scale as well, I'm a little bit over two meters tall. So the plants that you see around me, if that helps you give them a little bit of scale. So these are the seed pods that get left after the flower. So you can see there, there and there is some seed. Uh, if we grow those seedlings on, then the variation that we can get from each seed within the same seed pod can be significant, which is why we have a, a whole seed program now 
where we label and collect seed and um, grow on new genetics all the time. Some uh, pink Echinopsis flowers. A lot of people also ask where the fruit for the cactus ice cream comes from. So this is Cereus Peruvianus Monstros Blue which is a bit of a mouthful, but um, this produces a fruit called Peruvian apple. And uh, it's a spineless fruit as well. So unlike the prickly pear, which is a spiky fruit, you can actually just pick these off with your hands, peel it like an orange and eat it. It's delicious. Will seeds be sold in the future? Yes, they will. We'll definitely be doing seed packs in the future. And have a look at this big beauty. This is a, a chilensis, and you can see how big the spines are. So they're probably 10 to 15 centimetres long. Um, yeah, this is one of my favourite plants just because it's grown so many arms at such a young age. This once again is probably only 15, 20 years old. Um, one of the oldest plants in this new section, relatively new section of the garden. But when you look through, you'll see there's some slightly taller plants, but some of those have actually snapped um, and so the growth is not as significant perhaps as this one that hasn't had that fall or snappage um, since probably it had been planted as a small plant 15 to 20 years ago. I'll show you some others that have actually broken over the years or fallen over. Any questions in the comments? I would like to see the plant named after you. Ah. I don't think there is one named after me out here. So this is obviously a very huge monster of a plant. It's um, even just the width of the body of the plant is enormous. So in comparison to the chilensis, that maybe is only 20 or 30 centimetres round. This one here is almost 60 to 70 centimetres in width. Um, we've had this one propped up for quite a while now. It did snap in the middle, which is why all these arms are protruding out from about three quarters of the way up the plant. And um, you can see they snap quite easily once they get top heavy. Come and have a look at this one. So this one only fell over recently, but because we've had these really hot days, you can see that it's already getting burnt on one side where that would have normally been the south side of the plant. So it wouldn't have been used to getting all of this hot sun. Um, so we need to get this one out pretty, pretty quick smart. Which one is here. the next to fall? What's that? Which one will be the next to fall? No idea. Anyone's guess is as good. You can see this has actually started rotting from the inside out, uh, which is why that would have been weakened. And sometimes, and as you can see, it's really hard to see where that originated from. It looks like it's really coming from the core. Um, we've put some rocks there in hopes that we could keep this one upright, but even that didn't work in this case. So there's just a few more flowers that are open through here. We'll go and have a look at those. And then we'll wrap it up. So just a few more of these bigger flowers on um, the Pasacana Toshekii. This is a Jim's Pasacana and it's seedling seven. So we'll finish off there today, guys. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, like I said, if you've ever got questions or you want to tune in the future, come prepped with some questions if you've got any. Um, if, you, if you need any help with anything, just flick us a message and we'll do our best to help you out. Um, so yeah, enjoy Christmas and the new year. Hopefully see you again soon. You can just hit end.